Hello everyone. Consider a situation in which you are playing for a live audience and you want your microphone to be ducked whenever you are playing your instrument automatically without you having to press a button. All of that is possible within the Reaper and I'm going to show you how to achieve this right now. Here we are in Reaper. I've got a two track setup for you. Track one is one music, one item. music. I call this music because this is the track that I want to be ducked whenever something else comes in. This could be your microphone if you're in a live situation where you want something, presumably your live instrument, to duck your microphone. So this is the track that I want to be silent whenever something else is happening. The other track Two -armed ray synth. is Ray Synth, which is a virtual instrument that I'm using for the purpose of demonstrating this functionality. This could be a live instrument. This could be a beeping noise if you want to mask something that you are saying or you were saying at a given point. Anything that comes to mind could go on this second track. Now, I've got a little bit of music on the first track. One music, one item. Let's just play here so that you can demonstrate what I mean. And we will make it so that as soon as I play something on the second track, Two -armed race in. select it, open the virtual MIDI keyboard, virtual MIDI. and play something. Now let's play. And let's play. Both of the things happen at the same time, right? So right now the second track does not influence the first track. But we will change that. Where do we start? First of all, our first track, the track that is supposed to get ducked away when the second track is playing, that one needs to receive additional inputs. So it needs to have more channels than it currently has. It by default starts with two channels. We have to expand it to four channels. A typical side chaining phenomenon. Let's go up one music, one item. to the music track and hit I. Routing for track one. Music dialogue property page DB pan with track volume value edit selected plus 0, 0.00. And we have to tap a few times. Track pan value edit selected center. Track width value edit selected 100%. Track channels. Combo box two collapsed. And we have to change that to four by pressing down the row once. Four. Great. Let's escape out of this window. Unsaved project repo. So what needs to be done now? We have to set up a send from track two, the track that should trigger the ducking, to track one, the track that should dug away whenever something's happening on track two. We go down to track two. Two arms race in. And I like to do this really quickly by pressing Alt and Context Menu, which is, I think, the second Context Menu on Mac. So it would be the one triggered by pressing the 2 on the keyboard together with the appropriate modifier. Now, let's do that. Context Menu Menu. And here come some options. Master Send Check M. Send Sub Menu S. That's the one we want sent. Sub Menu. Open that. Adjust I slash O parameters. Right click on Volume Fader A. One music one. And we want to hit enter on music. Right now, the send is set up properly, but it's going to channels one and two on the music track. I, however, want the output from track two to go to channels three and four on the music track. So I have to change this, and we will do this by using the routing dialog again. We go up to the music track. One music, one item. And press I there. Routing for track. And we know all of this already, so we will just tap a few times. Track pan, track width, track channel, track volume, track pan, fit, track width, fit, media playback, off sense, combo, audio, hardware, out, media, hardware, out, combo, box, send to a re receive, combo, box, add, you receive from track to raise in. Delete button. That's the one. We want to press context menu here. Context menu menu. And go down. MIDI volume slash pan M. Envelopes and automation E. Mute M. Phase slash polarity P. Mono M. Destination audio channel 1 slash 2D. That's what we want to change destination audio channel and right now it's set to one two we will press enter on that context menu menu that will open another context menu let's see here one slash two check one two slash three two 
three slash four three. We want three four. That's what we are going to check now. Route input. And that's all we have to do in here. We press escape again. Unsaved. So by now, everything that comes in through the track that should trigger the ducking is sent to channels three and four, which doesn't help us at all. We still need something that actually triggers the ducking. And this is a plugin called Regate, which is provided directly and for free within Reaper. So we will just instantiate that. Hit F on the track that is going to be ducked away, which is our music track in this case. Add FX to track one music dialog filter. Search filter combo box collapsed. Edit selected reassent. We are going to search for Regate. R E A R C A G A T E G A T E. Let's see here. List one list. V S T. Regate. Cocos. One to one. That's what we want. Press enter on that. Effect. And now here is some things that we need to change. Let's tap through and see what we need to do. Edit multi edit FX combo box no preset and power button. Four and throughout but UI button. FX active checkbox checked. Regate grouping threshold slider in. Edit selected in. Envelope grouping pre open. Edit selected zero. Attack slider three. Edit selected three. Hold slider zero. Edit selected zero. Release slider one hundred. Edit selected one hundred. So all of these attack, pre-open, hold, and release. These are typical gate parameters. I won't go too much into detail here because it's not really necessary for this example. However, if you want me to make a total video of what gates can do for you and how they usually work, let me know in the comment section below the video and I will go into detail about all the different parameters and features that we have available here. Hysteresis slider plus 0.0, .0. edit selected plus 0, 0.0, detector input, combo box main inputs collapsed. And this is the very first one that we need to do. We need to change the detector input from our main input to auxiliary inputs, auxiliary inputs, which is just done by pressing the down arrow once, which we now use the channels three and four to actually trigger the gate, which is exactly what we want instead of channel one and two, which would mean that the track is going to duck itself away all the time because as soon as sickness comes in, the sickness is gonna get ducked away. Low pass slider 20,000. But we need to continue pressing tab until we reach a special option that is at the very end of the tab order. Edit selected to hipper slider zero. Edit selected RMS size. Edit selected send video on open slash close. Edit selected channel. Edit selected output mix grouping. Output mix wet slider. Edit selected dry slider. In. Edit selected noise level slider. In. Edit select review filter output invert gate. Duck. Checkbox not checked. And that is what we need to check. We need to check invert gate in parents duck. Let's check that. Dictaven checked. After checking this checkbox, there's one more thing we need to do, and that is change the threshold of the gate. The threshold specifies the volume level that needs to be reached by our input signal that is going to trigger the gate before the gate actually starts doing something. So for example, if we want our gate to close and therefore prevent our track from outputting anything, so if you want our mic to be silent, if something comes in, then we have to specify how loud our signal that should trigger the gate can or must actually be in order to trigger it. Right now it's set to minus infinity, which means that it's currently off. It's not going to trigger anything and our music is not going to get ducked if we play something on our synthesizer track. However, we obviously don't want that. So we would tap a few times here. And remove this edit, edit, compress, power for you, FN rate, edit, selected in. And threshold slider in. That's the slider that we want. We need to move it to something that is higher than infinity, obviously. So we will move it up. Minus one, um, plus 3.1, plus 2.0, minus 13.2. That is what we want. Let's set it to minus 13. And um, let's close down now. Unsafe. Remember that in the case that your gate doesn't work, so you're inputting something on your channels that should trigger the gate to close and you are really, really sure that you've set up everything correctly, then it might actually be the case that your input signal is too low and the threshold wasn't set correctly to actually trigger the gate. So always play around with that and see if that helps to fix your problem. Now let's select the second track. Two arms raised in. Let's open the virtual MIDI keyboard. Virtual MIDI key let's hit play and then play some notes. You 
can see now that as soon as I hit some notes on my second track, the first track is automatically going to get silenced. And that is exactly what this method is supposed to do. With that, you can, even in live circumstances, always duck one of your tracks while the other track is playing. Now, that's all, right? It's pretty simple. You need one plugin that is for free with Reaper, and you need just to set up a side chain. So you need to send one track to the other track, route it to the appropriate channels and set up the plugin so that it accepts the correct input and triggers depending on what comes in. I hope that was useful. If yes, then please subscribe to the channel and like the video so that you don't miss anything. I promise I will make more useful tutorial videos about Reaper and everything accessibility related out there in the music world. Thanks for staying with me. Until next time. Bye-bye.